Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. So today we have the Puda frame and it is the Armaton Chameleons clone. Now many of you have requested this and I also wanted to pick one up for myself. I know I'm going to get a lot of shit for this but I just really wanted to see it. So let's start with some of the components that were missing. I was missing a couple screws and that's one thing. The bottom plate is seems to be very rigid. I mean this thing looks like it's going to take a hit. However, you know, my first impressions were very good, but then I started screwing into the aluminum and the aluminum just started melting. So you really cannot over screw the things into aluminum. And what they have done instead, they give you longer screws to kind of go in longer. So it has better uh, chance of holding its threads. For example, on the back, basically the screws go all the way to half. This one goes all the way to the half and this one goes there just because the aluminum is so buttery. Um, it's not like any Jeb RC, uh, Geb RC LX5 aluminum here. No, it's just, uh, it's, it's very buttery. And um, I think they're using the same kind of aluminum as the Armaton Chameleon, because I heard they also use the 6065. They weren't using 7075 aluminum at the time. I don't know if they are or if they did, but that's what I've heard. And um, as you can tell here, it's just, I don't know if it's a blatant copy of the Armaton Chameleon or maybe inspired by. You guys might be able to answer that for me because I don't have one. So, but overall, I mean, it looks nice. It looks like it could take a hit, but the, the, the you know, the aluminum is a little bit scary. And, you know, the way they executed it, I don't know if they did this on the original also. They're using M2 screws, which is really, you know, like two, like long M2 screws that you really can't even tighten because one already just stripped on me. And so you really have to be careful, I guess, when you're putting it together, uh, just so you don't really mess this up. But overall, I mean, it's a, it's pretty nice. I mean, I, I like it, to be honest. I think I'm going to build it and um, have it like a motor testing quad or something. So let's just get its weight here, because I think the weight's important also. So it's a 4 millimeter bottom plate, 114 grams. That's pretty good. That's like the average for these types of frames. So that's just, um, yeah, it's just average. Nothing too spectacular. Let's see the amount of space we have inside. We have around, we could say almost 20 millimeters of space inside. So you could probably put like a three stack push in it. And they do have, you know, your your SMA little antenna thing. You could flip this upside down. I think I had it upside down. They do have a lot of mounting solutions, I would say. You know, a lot of cutouts. So it is a top mount battery. And they do have these little notches here to hold your battery in place. As you can see right there. GoPro obviously is thought through, kind of. Am I missing something? Isn't there supposed to be space? Oh, there it is. Okay, yeah, yeah, it is thought through. So you can put your GoPro up here. And they do give you two anti-slip pads, one for the top here and one for here. I don't know where I placed the other one, but they do give you two. So one would go here for your Go GoPro or whatever. Uh, but overall, it's a little nice cheap frame. It's a nice little clone. Um, you know, I still highly recommend you support the real uh, designer of the frame. And um, yeah, but if you guys want to see it, here it is. You guys can see it. So that's going to conclude it for this video, guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you guys have any questions or any suggestions, feel free to let me know. And I will see you next time. See you guys. Take care.